Two more Iowans have died from H1N1, bringing the total up to three. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, we'll tell you where these death deaths happened in the state. And some of students' favorite gadgets may be making them an energy hog. Find out what students can do to cut back. And in sports, we'll rank the Iowa athletic teams in the latest edition of Power Rankings. All this, as well as how to keep your bike from getting stolen in your local forecast, is headed your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us for your Monday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Tiffany Hung. And I'm Melanie Casera. First tonight, the Iowa Department of Public Health confirmed Monday the second and third deaths from H1N1, and both happened in eastern Iowa. Both victims were adult males and had factors that made them high-risk cases. The department reminded Iowans to take H1N1 seriously, but the eastern Iowa area is not at a higher risk for the virus. So far, no confirmed cases have been reported at the UI. However, it is estimated that over 200 students have shown H1N1 symptoms. The UI is not specifically testing for H1N1. UI students, be aware of email scams in your Hawk mail. Hackers are sending emails to university accounts asking for Hawk IDs and password, which allow access to personal information. The University IT Security Center warns students that only web addresses that require Hawk ID end in uiowa.edu. One area library is celebrating our freedoms and our right to read this week. The Iowa City City Public Library is celebrating Banned Book Week by holding its annual Intellectual Freedom Festival. The festival includes a display with previously banned books and several public programs and discussions on intellectual freedom. One library official says that choosing what to read is not only a democratic right, but also a basic human right. Lots of books have been challenged or banned, and we just affirm that um, everybody has the individual right to choose to read what they want to read, and that um, we should not have other people choosing that for us. The library will continue its festival until Wednesday at noon. Laptops, iPods, and televisions have become common household gadgets that eat up electricity. Daily Island TV's Ashley Coran tells us how college students are becoming some of the biggest energy hogs. Meet Tyler, a normal college student in an average rundown college house with 12 other roommates. Tyler and his roommates, just like many other college kids on campus, are what you might consider an energy hog. I leave my television plugged in. I have two fans plugged in, which I usually forget to turn off when I leave. Uh, my computer's plugged in all the time. No printer, though, so that helps. Tyler and his roommates have some of the most power-hungry gadgets there are. Some of those include two plasmas, one LCD TV, 11 iPods, video games galore, and 12 computers. Their energy bill can range from $350 to $900 a month. I do not think about my energy consumption. Tyler isn't the only one who doesn't think about energy. The manufacturers of these new electronics don't either. Your radio, desktop computer, and even the new flat screen televisions all consume energy even when they're turned off. The old tube stuff used to be on off, right? And so when you turn it on, it was actually fairly efficient and it'd be off most of the time. Now, because people want to be able to turn on with the remote control, right, that amplifier might be using 15, 20, 30 watts all the time. Ratner estimated that a new LCD TV consumes about five times more energy than an old tube TV. Right, so when you're talking about increasing the amount of energy used by a factor of five, right, that's pretty harsh. It's important to unplug all your electronics when they aren't being used. Otherwise, you might just be categorized as an energy hog. Ashley Curran, Daily Iowan TV. Congress continues to focus on energy consum consumption. However, no legislation has been passed to modify the new gadgets. You're watching Daily Iowan TV still to come. Biking to class is common for UI students. Find out how to handle keeping your bike safe on campus. And in sports, we have your flag football intramural rankings and highlights from last night's Chicago Southside matchup. But first, fall weather finally hit the Iowa City area on Monday. Students brought out their long sleeves and jackets to stay warm against the brisk winds on Monday. The fall winds gusted up to 38 miles per hour, making the temperature of 62 degrees seem even colder while walking to class. 
And now Daily Island TV's Jillian Petrus joins us for your local weather forecast. And Jill, how much longer will these winds stick around? Thanks, Tiffany. Yes, it is starting to feel like fall out there, but that surprisingly may bring us some rain later in the week. But let's start off with your Tuesday morning forecast. In the morning, you can expect highs to reach around 48 degrees with sunny skies. Those temps will warm up to about 59 as we move into the afternoon and in the evening, temps will drop back down to 49 degrees with clear skies. So we take a look at our extended forecast. There's that rain I'm talking about on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. You can expect possible thunderstorms and showers. Temps are going to hang right around the 60s to upper 50s and dip as low as 42 degrees. That's a look at your local weather forecast. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Jill. A sale at the Old Capitol Mall raised money for the UI Hospital's smallest patients Monday. Volunteers for the Preemie Project held a fundraiser in the mall on Monday afternoon, selling anything from cinnamon rolls to baby clothes. The Preemie Project is a nonprofit organization which, which makes blankets, hats, and booties for all of the premature babies in the hospital's intensive care unit. One mission of the group is to provide handmade items as a small comfort to families going through a tough time be able to give these items a little hat for each stage of their growth or a pair of booties or a blanket just to tell them that there's somebody out there that is thinking about them that thinks that their baby's going to make it. All of the proceeds from the sale will go toward buying supplies for future babies.